Welcome to Max Panda. In this demo, I'll be walking you through the Max Panda software. I'll start by briefly going over the various menu items. Next, I'll take a look at the different user roles that are available. This will be followed by a look at the work order submission process. And finally, I'll come back to the main menu and cover it in a little bit more detail. So I'll start with the main menu. First is work orders. This is where you can view your current work orders as well as submit new ones. The calendar lets you view these work orders in calendar form by month, week, or day. The PM library or prevention and maintenance is where you can schedule your reoccurring work orders. The task library lets you create a specific set of tasks or procedures and attach those to your work orders. Company tab is used to customize your account. Sites is where you can create multiple sites or entities within your Max Panda account, each with its own buildings, locations, assets, users, and work orders. Information added to one site cannot be viewed by the other sites. Buildings can be your actual physical buildings or they can be used as a way to filter your locations. Locations are the physical locations where work will be carried out. Assets are your pieces of equipment. Parts is where you can track your current inventory levels. Staff and users is where you can invite new users as well as maintain your current users. Vendors is where you can track and add any outside vendors or contractors you use. Reports, there's a various pre-generated reports you can run. Invoices is used to help capture costs on your work orders. Gallery is where all the image files, Word documents, and audio files that you upload to the various work orders are gathered for easy viewing. And this system one is only on my account because I've got a demo account, so you won't have this one. Next, I'm going to cover the various user roles available within Max Panda, starting with the company admin. This is the top role with access to everything within Max Panda. The company admins have the ability to approve and assign work orders, customize the account, view all the sites, and view all costs associated with work requests. Because most of this demo will be from the point of view of the company admin, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it right now. Slightly below the company admin is a company editor. This role is very similar to the company admin, but with a few less permissions. The company editor can still approve and assign work orders, but they cannot customize the account or run reports. The site admin role is very similar to the company admin role, but they are restricted to a single site. Same thing for site editor. Very similar to the company editor role, but once again, they are restricted to a single site. The next role available is staff. This is usually assigned to the users who will actually be completing and carrying out the work requested in the work orders. Staff can submit, be assigned to, and complete work orders. They also have the ability to view, but not edit, the buildings, locations, asset, and part information within the account. The submitter and tenant roles are actually the same role, just with different names. These roles can only submit new work orders. They can't be assigned or complete them. The viewer role has even less permissions. All they can do is view work orders that they have been assigned to. They can't submit new ones, complete them, or edit them. This role is for someone who may want to be informed of the work being done, but may not necessarily want to be involved. If you choose to invite your vendors into Max Panda, there are two roles available. The first one, Vendor Limited, allows your vendors to be assigned and complete work, but that's it. The second role, Vendor Unlimited, gives them a little bit more permissions. Not only can they be assigned to complete work, but they can also submit new work orders for approval. The final role we have is a guest role. This is located under Sites, Guest Services, and must be enabled in each site. Once enabled, it generates a link which could then be put on a website, included in an email, or even printed off as a QR code. This lets work orders be submitted without needing to create a user account. I'm going to walk you through the process of submitting a work order. I am going to be doing this from the submitter role so you can see what the submitter sees. First thing I want to do is I can either click the add button in the upper right hand corner, the submit button along the top, or the submit work order button on the left hand menu. This brings up my basic work order form. All I have to do is fill it out with some basic details, a title, I can pick a category from this list that you customize, as well as a priority level, also a customizable list. I can add a short description to expand upon the title, add some notes if there's anything else I want to add but don't have a field for. I can add CC, so I can add someone's email address in here if there's anyone else I want to receive a copy of this work order. Next, I will choose my building and then I could choose either the location or the asset where the work needs to be done. 
upload any files I might have, such as a picture of the issue or a Word document, and hit Submit. As a submitter, I can now see my work order is now at the top of my menu, and the status has changed to Pending. Once a work order is submitted, an email notification goes out to any company admins and company editors, letting them know that there's a new work order that requires their approval. So now I'm going to switch to the company admin role. As you can see, the new work order I just submitted appears at the top of my list. I now open that up and I can view all the details that the submitter or staff or guest has previously filled out. I look things over, I can make any changes I want, such as changing the category, I could change the priority level, add my own notes, I have a new category private notes which can only be seen by staff, admins and editors. I select my due date, the default is midnight seven days from now but I can change when I want that due as well I can, can change it right down to the minute so if I instead want it due Friday at five o'clock I can type that in. I can see who originally created or submitted the work order. I can add my own files, view the location, add vendors if I need a vendor or an outside contractor for the job. I could add my task list here, but I'll go into more details about the tasks later. If a specific part is required, for example, this one is changing a light bulb, I can add light bulbs to my work order. I assign my staff. I can assign multiple staff at once. This is where I would add my invoices, but I probably wouldn't have one at this stage. I could view any attachments that have been added. Once I am satisfied with the work order, I would then want to click approve. I also have the option to reject work orders, for example, if I got duplicates or if it's a work that doesn't need to be done, but I'm going to go ahead and approve this work order. Now that I've approved the work order, the status has changed to approved as well. Email notifications as well as mobile push notifications have gone out to any staff or vendors that I have assigned the work order to. Next, I'm going to switch to the staff role. Here I can see that my new work order has appeared on my to-do list. As a staff member, I would open it up and I'd be able to view all the details that have been added up till now. Here I can read up on anything, view the due date, see any notes added, everything I need to go complete the job. Once the job is completed, I would come back and fill in my own details. This includes tracking how many parts were used, as well as how long I spent on the job. Once everything has been filled out and updated, I want to complete the work order to show that the work has been completed. I could add a note if I want, but I'm not going to at this point. Because the work has been completed, the work order has now disappeared off my to-do list. Going back to the company admin role, when I log in again, I can see that the work has been completed. As a company admin or company editor, I'd want to open that up one more time just to give it a brief look over. Make sure everything is filled out to my satisfaction, check over their hours and parts used, and if I'm completely satisfied with the work order, I'd want to close this. If the work had not been completed by the due date, it would have switched to an overdue status, at which point email notifications would have gone out to all staff and vendors assigned to the work, as well as to the company editor and company admin saying the work has gone overdue. That's all there is to it to submitting a work order within Max Panda. Now that we've gone through the process of submitting a work order, I'm going to show you some of the other features available within Max Panda. Here is a main dashboard that includes a list of all the work orders currently active within your account. If I am looking for a particular work order, it's got a live filter. For example, if I type in light, it will filter out all the work orders with the word light in the title. I can also filter by priority, category, staff members assigned, building locations, due date, etc. Some other options available is view overdue will quickly filter out all the overdue work orders so I can see what requires my attention. View pending will tell me everything that needs my approval. Submit work order to submit a new work order. Staff work orders will let me look up what work orders are assigned to specific staff members. 
my work orders is work orders that I have submitted so that I can follow up on their progress and the my to-do list is work orders that have been assigned to me that I must complete. The calendar takes that list and puts it in a calendar form so you can see exactly what's due when. Here you can see all the work orders are color coded as well as they give their title and staff members and vendors assigned. At the bottom you'll find a chart to help with the color coding meanings. I also have the option if, for example, I have a work order that I know is not going to get completed on the day it's assigned, I can actually drag and drop it to a new location and it will update that work order for me as well. If I need more details on a particular work order, all I have to do is click it and it will open the original work order so I can read all the information. If you're looking for particular work orders, we have a ton of filters available. You can search by building, location, staff, vendor, category, status asset, etc. As well, you have the option to view your work orders in a weekly format and a daily format. Next in the main menu is the PM or Preventive Maintenance Library. It is here that you can schedule your work orders. Anything that needs to occur on a regular schedule such as yearly inspections could be set up here. All you have to do is click Add New, but I'm just going to open one already pre-made one. The first half is very similar to the one-time work orders. You just give it a title, a category, priority. You can turn the work orders on and off if for some reason you need the work orders to stop generating for a period of time. Add CC, description, notes, upload files, assign a location or an asset, uh, assign parts to it, assign your staff and vendors, schedule. This is where it gets a little bit different. You have the ability to uh, schedule work orders on a daily basis, so every two days for example or every weekday they can be scheduled on a weekly basis so occur every four weeks on Friday and Monday if you wanted could do a monthly so occur on the fifth day of every three months or the first Sunday of every two months as well you can schedule them yearly so occur or every so occur every five years on January 10th of, or on the first Saturday of December next you want to choose if it's an all-day task which means they have one day to complete it by midnight or seven days. I can also do it down to the minutes if they only have three hours to complete it, for example. I give it a start date, a start time, no end date. The work orders will generate forever. And after a specific amount of occurrences, for example, generate 10 work orders and then stop. Or I can give it a hard end date, like end by stop by the end of summer. I can also assign any task list I have view attachments, and view PM occurrences. I can see ones that have been processed as well as any future ones that are scheduled. Once everything is filled out, save it and it will automatically start generating. Next is the task library. This is used if you have a specific set of procedures or tasks you want done. All you do is create a task template and attach it to your work orders. You can make it required fields, which means that the tasks will have to be completed before the work order can be completed. The company tab is where all your account customization comes into effect. This is where you can choose your current plan level, customize your emails, update credit card information, add your preferences, reset users' passwords, etc. As well, in the company setup portion, this is where you'd come up with your location types, asset types, um, work order categories, priorities, etc. Other menu options, you could add new sites within the site submenu. In buildings, you would add your buildings. Locations includes adding all your locations, and assets is your assets. That's all pretty straightforward. Your parts inventory is where you can keep track of your current inventory levels. As well, you can set up email reminders to notify you when you start to reach your minimum level. In staff users, this is where you can invite new users, as well as maintain your current user list. To invite new users, all you have to do is put their email addresses separated by semi semicolon, select a role, a site, and click invite. They get an email, they just follow the link, come up with a username and password, and they can jump right into the system. Vendors is any outside vendors or contractors you have, you just add them in here. And if you want, you can invite them in either as a vendor limited or vendor unlimited role. Under reports, you'll find 10 pre-generated reports you can run to help calculate the cost of these work orders. First is work order status. This is just a snapshot into your account. Work order summary will let you look up all the work orders completed in a specific time frame that you enter. For example, if I wanted to see all the work orders completed last month, 
I would choose my date range, refresh report, and it will list every work order that happened in that date range. Giving me the title, status, start due date, building, type, category, hours worked, cost of labor, cost of parts, cost of invoice, and the total cost for each work order. I can print off this list as well. I can download it in numerous formats, including PDF, Excel, and CSV. If I go to the end of the report, it will give me a grand total of all the work orders completed in the date range I selected. If you want the same report, but maybe a little bit more specific, you can run it by asset, building, location, labor, and vendor. The other main type of report we have is the asset and location threshold reports. What this does is you set a threshold levels for your assets and locations. Anything above that threshold will get appear on this report. This is really good for predicting end of life, or maybe more work orders were completed on a specific location asset and you weren't aware because they were so spread out. The final type of report we have is the submitter summary. This just lets you know who's been submitting work orders. Invoice is where you can create invoices to capture costs for reporting purposes. And galleries where all those Word documents, images, and audio files you uploaded to the work orders are gathered for easy viewing. There are three last things I want to cover. The first is data import. We know it can be tedious to add all your buildings, locations, and assets by hand. That's why we offer this data import service. All you have to do is fill out this Excel sheet, email it to us, and we'll upload it into your account for you. Instructions on how to fill out the Excel sheet can be found on our website. The second thing I want to mention is our mobile app. This is included with your monthly subscription and is available for iOS and Android. On the mobile app, you can submit, complete, and approve work orders right from your smartphone or tablet. As well, once it's installed, you will receive push notifications when a new work order is assigned to you. Finally, I want to go over our pricing plans. MaxPanda offers five different subscription levels to meet the needs of every business. The plans start at $29 a month and are based on the number of work orders approved within a month. The main differences between the plans is the number of work orders you can submit, the storage available for attachments, and the number of sites you can create in each. As well, the mobile app is available for every plan except Starter, and all plans include an unlimited amount of users. For example, the Enhanced Plan. For $49 a month, you get 175 monthly work orders. You get unlimited users, 2 gigs of storage, you can customize your emails, the mobile app is included, and you get your main site plus 2 extras. If you would prefer not to go with the monthly plan, MaxPanda also offers yearly subscriptions. As well, all nonprofit organizations receive a discount. Thank you for joining me for this video demo. You'll find some helpful links in the video description. As well, if you have further questions or want to schedule a live demo, please feel free to contact us.